Washington has a three-star offensive lineman, Zach Staskowski. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into a special bonus edition of the Locked On Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He's site editor with Athlon Sports is inside the Huskies. I'm the site editor with Huskies Wire. Thank you for making this your first watch or first listen of the day as we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we are coming at you on this Tuesday evening with a special bonus episode because Washington just added three-star offensive lineman Zach Staskowski. We're going to get to that. We're also going to talk about what else Washington can get to in this 2025 class. And Lars, this is a really, really big addition for the Huskies. Pun or no pun intended? I'm giving you a second to answer yes. the question. Why. Okay, yes. that's what I figured. So, because again, <laughs> but I think it does speak to what, you know, because I was thinking back to this, I was you know, writing an article about Max and Supreme that'll be up on inside the Huskies. And a few other offensive line pieces since we talked to Brandon Carroll a couple of days ago. And the more you start to look at it, these guys in that 275 to 285 range, Brandon Carroll seems to be, viewing them in the exact same light as 320 pounders, which is really interesting to me, but it does, it, it's kind of, in a way it's been, it's been on brand, but my, my point is I like the athletic take as it doesn't necessarily yes. preclude me from saying down the road, he couldn't grow into a bigger tackle of sorts, but I still think regardless, I don't necessarily think you need that now when you look at the type of offensive alignment, especially left tackle and right tackle that Brennan Carroll wants to recur. So I, I certainly hear your point. I don't I don't disagree with you there when we talk about not needing it. In the Big Ten, you certainly do. You want to make sure that they're as big and athletic as possible. But the like McCree, I feel, is is a cert, certainly a different case. Because when you look at Staskowski, he's 275, 280 right now, as you said, but he's got the ability to add a lot of good weight. When you look at him, he plays with a nice base. He plays really balanced and he moves really well. And it, when you look at the other guys in this class, he's a true tackle. Chantal Lele, Lowen Coleman Brusa, Jake Flores, they're guys that can play swing tackle if you want them to, but they're probably going to be true interior guys. And you just look at his arm length, you look at all those things, and you say, yeah, that's a true tackle when you watch his film. And that's really important for a couple of reasons. The first one being you obviously want to have one in this class when you look at the depth. It's it's been a little bit questionable, you know, so far through through fall camp behind Dreza Party. But when I just when I when I look at this depth and I, I look at this take. I see a guy who can grow into that 310, 315 pound frame and still move the same way, which is really nice. And that's exactly what you want to see because moving into the Big Ten, that's the body type you want. You want to make sure that you have guys where Chantalele is the perfect body type to play guard. And you can say the same thing about Lowen Coleman Brusa, whether he's a guard or a tackle, where, you know, he is a little bit slighter and a little bit more athletic, but you can still add that good weight on him. You can say the same thing about Jake Flores. And Zach falls into this mold as well where you can put that good weight on him, which is something we've seen Tyler Owens and Washington strength staff do, do so far. And I'm just, I'm really encouraged by all of this where, you know, we'll, we'll get to the take in terms of what it means for UW recruiting the Pacific Northwest and the state of Oregon as well. But this is just the mold that Brennan Carroll is looking for. And, you know, Jordan Morgan was the same body type coming out of high school and he turned him into a first round pick. Yeah, I think the word you hit the nail on the head. It's mold, they're moldable. That they are moldable. Yeah. Like that. That's what, you, especially with the Tyler Owens point. Because I'm glad you mentioned that. All the weight that you're talking about. Because you don't. When you think about adding weight, it's how does that weight end up looking? It's not just you know getting bigger. You know, having a more strong base. But a lot of it also can come in the arms as well. So when you start to think about what that actually looks like, it doesn't end up when you add you know, 10 pounds here or another five pounds, maybe, you know, as a sophomore and you start to round into your body because you don't really round into your body until like you're midway through your sophomore season. And that's when you can start to really see the end product here. But it's at a six, six frame with you, we're talking between, let's say two eighty five to three fifteen. There's a lot that you can do with that. And especially in the big yeah. 10, as you mentioned, you want to be maybe closer to that three fifteen range, but even if you're at three Oh five, you know, cl closing in on three ten when you put on the whole, pads and you know helmet and everything you know, you know you add the total weight that you know teams always inflate a little bit right that i think is the end goal but it's starting out with making sure you can still keep that athletic ability without becoming too kind of rigid as you start to add on that extra weight absolutely and th this doesn't negate other takes at the position as well but we'll get to that after the break 
right after a message from our good friends over at FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. They're set for everyone every day, all summer long. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And speaking of Major League Baseball, one guy that you got to keep an eye out over on FanDuel because he's got awesome odds for MVP right now is Kansas City Royal shortstop Bobby Witt Jr. I've been watching him just tear it up against the Red Sox over the last couple of days. And that guy is keeping the Royals in the wild card race single-handedly. And I think he's a better player than Aaron Judge. Let's just call a spade a spade here. I, I love watching the guy play. He's a true five-tool player and he deserves some more MVP votes. And you should go check out his odds over on FanDuel. So Lars, one thing that, you know, I, I really like about this take is Washington has taken a lot of these projectable bodies that you've, you and I have talked about with some of these three-star guys, Lowen Coleman, Brusa, uh, Jake Flores, and now Zach Staskowski. And that's okay. That's a good thing because now when we look at these sort of takes, it doesn't preclude them from going into the transfer portal again and taking an offensive lineman if, if they want. Where, you know, we look at this where Enoch Vimaha is going to be out of eligibility after the season. You know, there, there, there's certainly going to be some movement in, in the transfer portal along the offensive line. And we saw UW get outbid, as, you know, as Jed Fish alluded to at Media Day for Marcus Bryant in, in the spring transfer window, even though, you know, he didn't name the name, but, we, you know, it, it was very obvious when he was applying there. But this doesn't preclude that take. We're now Jed, you know, once he has the team a little bit more in his vision, a little bit more the way that he wants it, I'm I'm sure that they're going to try to go hard at, off, after an offensive lineman, probably a tackle, depending on the way the 2024 season works out. And getting a guy like Zach in the room is great because he's a nice projectable body that you can work with and mold, and you don't need to worry about him starting as a true freshman, as a redshirt freshman. And of course, Justin Hilkema is going to be a guy that you and I both believe are in this mix, but why not go get somebody who you can rely on as maybe an upperclassman and you can say, all right, if it doesn't work out the way we want it, we want it to with some of these younger guys, we know we have an experienced guy who we can get one year out of. Yeah, I'm not sure Jed wants to touch the portal at this point, especially when it comes to offensive line. Just given what it ended up looking like, I mean, I, I'm with you in terms of if you need right. if you need to go if you need to go and do that, go and do that. But I think it almost hammers the point more why you want to get these guys out of high school and start to yes. develop some of these projectable bodies that whether they make it. I mean, we saw it look Paki Fino is a guy that's going to be an impact guy yeah. this season, and David Briagian is a guy who you still have as a projectable body who we're not even really talking about right now. Who in 24 months from now could be in the rotation. And I'm not saying will exactly. be, but I'm just saying that's the point of why you continue to stack these type of bodies. And so you look at the transfer portal more as like, okay, if we need to, you know, so be it, let's say Maximus blows up with the job. Right. No, so, I'm, right I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I just want to get that in there because because that's what I'm saying. Where you're you're right. I Jed certainly wants to build, especially the offensive line, because it's so tough to get some of these guys. But I'm just saying, if they look at the situation, if the coaching staff looks at it, Fish, Brennan Carroll, they look at it in December and they say, We need a tackle. This sort of take doesn't preclude that, is is more my point. Yeah, oh, right. I, I, I guess yeah, that would that would I think if they did end up taking it because you're right. I guess I could always see them taking, you know, in that December early period, they might take a tackle, but I think that would almost supplement I would honestly say more of a guard. So I think, yeah, to your point, it doesn't preclude I anything. Sure. I, I, either way, I, I don't think it precludes anything because I think the other well, well, actually, if you think about it, they actually would have to almost get a guard, if you, at least a right guard, because Enoch's out of eligibility, but, TT Lee's out of eligibility. There's, there's a number, but the point is, again, yeah, it, it doesn't preclude any of that discussion. But I think it just, it really just hammers home the point of this is why you want to go and get somebody who you can project two or three years down the road, and and not necessarily. Or, or and by the way, I'm not saying that's like the limit of when he would start to, yeah, you know, that he could be a starter in two, three years. Right, but he doesn't necessarily, yeah. you know, work into that kind of as we're seeing with a lot of these guys that you know, Pocky's not going to be a starter this season, but next season and the season could be on could be. So they don't really know what it's going to truly look like. That's why you get as many moldable bodies as you can in the room and let Brandon Carroll figure out who can rise their confidence the quickest. 
Absolutely. And just, just, you know, a, a little bit of an addition there. We have seen uh, Michael Watkins and Pocky Fee now working with the second team along the offensive line, which is really nice. And that's really helpful. And that just adds to, you know, the depth that you want to create along the offensive line, which is exactly what a take like Zach Saskowski does. And we're going to make sure we get more into the film and all that with, you know, our, our Thursday show and so much more down the line, because this is a really nice take. And we also want to make sure that we talk about what else the Huskies can add to the 2025 class right after a message from our good friends over at eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. The Formula for Ring Championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. For all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to you as customers. So, Lars, a couple things that we, we certainly need to mention is the first thing is because we, we need to talk about the class of 2025 and what else Washington can add because it's going to be things like this where Zach is a flip from Minnesota where, you know, he had, he, he committed to them in June, decides to still take a visit to Washington after he gets offered decommits. And then a week later, he's in the boat where it feels like if Washington is going to add more guys that aren't Ladarian clarity and aren't somebody like Philip Bell or Andrew Marsh, it's going to be in this mold. And I'm not saying, you know, it's going to be this level of prospect where it could be a higher ranked guy, but it feels like this is how it's going to work where all of a sudden it's going to be, oh yeah, oh, oh, looks like they're pushing for this guy. Decommits, then all of a sudden a week later, oh yeah, no, he, he's coming to Washington. He's in the boat now. Well, I guess the, the, the ironic part of that, he was already in a boat, just switched yeah. boats, to be fair. <laughs> he like, was he, rowing a boat. He was rowing a boat, now he's actually letting Jed Fish cast the sail or do whatever. I don't, what, you know, we got to determine, side note here, I'll get to the point of the question. Side question, what is Jed Fish's boat? Like we need to figure yeah, out what his boat actually looks. Is it a sailboat? Is it a hydroplane? You know, because with the off, I think offensive guys could be hydros, and and this is where it ties in. You get an athletic kind of guy. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine Staskowski doing one of those hydros on Lake Washington? Like that, <laughs> the Oberto, like sponsored by UW. It's right. an NIL. Mont like Mont like futures. I mean, again, there's so we're many, so many hard hitting questions here on Locked on Huskies. This is beautiful. I love this. <laughs> no, but 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 I sincerely mean that because your your points well taken. And I'll get back to reality here. That is, you when you start to look at what the rest of the 25 class is going to be, aside from the Darian Clarity and the obvious, you know, Philip Bell, which I think that one more becomes does that is that a numbers question? Does that mean like does somebody have to, you know, because I I don't I don't think so. But I think that when you start to look at it, this, really also is gonna like the twenty five season might determine you know if some of the guys don't pro, you know the offensive linemen let's say don't project as well or some of the defensive linemen don't come along like we think. But when you start to look at the depth and rotation along those guys, there's not a ton of them. There's maybe like one or two candidates along the defensive line, linebackers. I guess you could always add a linebacker. You know, there's the safeties seem it seems to be clarity and that's it. Like it doesn't necessarily. Yeah. We haven't necessarily seen a ton. I guess there could always be a flip second time around. And, you know, Darius Dixon's a guy I would always watch for at modern day because of Dash Beerly and this connection. You know, yep. I, I could see that one coming down the pipe. And again, why the white came out of potentially being another one just in that neck right. of the woods, especially with the Jake Flores connection. Yeah. And so those are the other, that's why I want to say those names because those would be the only other two types of names you're considering. And the rest is kind of going towards that 26 class, which we've, we have seen them, you know, especially with the Luau at the lake, there was a lot of 26 guys there as well. It wasn't just 25 right. guys. So I think it's also a matter of getting this like new fish era of recruit, the new fishes in the, in the pond, if you will, hanging out Ooh. with all the other new fish. <laughs> again, we're reaching. You know, we're say. <laughs> like it's again, Jen uses the same Mary Poppins gift. So, you know, until I, hey, until I, respect some, it. I, 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 I respect it. I respect it. in the rain. I'm not seeing, I'm not saying I don't respect it, but maybe like have Jed open the umbrella, do like a, like a friend's gift. If you will, we'll like get the, there. The, we'll get there. Friends overrated. Well, but that's, that, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, no, I, I, I certainly see what you're saying. And you know, it's, I, I like that because there's still room to add a couple more guys. We talked about a few weeks ago when we talked about just, you know, some of the, the additional scholarships that are going to be opening up with the, the increase in the NCAA. And that that's something that seems to play a factor here 
where the the coaching staff can continue pushing for some of these bigger name guys. Like, you know, it, it feels like there might still be another spot on the offensive line open if they want to take it, you know, and all of a sudden if they're trying to make a, a late push. And again, I'm just throwing out a name here where the, I, I'm not I'm not trying to say this is actually happening, but if they want to go after Douglas Utu, where that's a guy that took a took a visit and is committed to Tennessee, but maybe he wants to stay closer to home is, is thinking about something along those lines. All of a sudden, you know, Hey, Oh yeah, we still have the spot open. And this, that's all of a sudden the guy where that's somebody who could be in the mix right away in terms of his physical readiness to play and all that sort of stuff. Where with some of these other guys, you can let Zach Staskowski develop. You can let Lowen Coleman Bruce develop. Well, having these guys play right away. And again, that depth is there. And that's what's really important about this. Lars, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to every day for tuning in. We really do appreciate your support. And this, you know, th- this is something that some of our insiders have been asking about over on the Lockdown Huskies and Center program. And, you know, we gave them all our thoughts, everything that was going on here. And that's, if that's something that you're interested in checking out, we get the link down in the description below. It gives you a two week free trial. And after that, it's just $4.99 a month for, you know, we're giving our recruiting rumors in there exclusive practice updates, one-on-one Q and A's. We're doing exclusive Q and A's for stuff for only our lock on Huskies insiders members. And we've got so much more fun stuff that we're adding over there as well. Make sure you go check that out. And with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple music, Amazon music, we're there, we're everywhere. We're updating this channel with new content every single day. So make sure you click that like button, click that little bell. So you never miss when we post new video, we got so much more fun stuff coming. Make sure to, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, drop them right down below in the comment section. And if you're audio only, please leave us a five star review. It does help us out a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you on Wednesday.